Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video, and this video is going to be another installment in this whole crazy moon jumping thing that I'm doing here at Jupiter. We started off way out, way out from Jupiter on Callisto, and we went from Callisto to Ganymede, then we went from Ganymede to Europa, at least we're almost at Europa, you can see here on the forward view, let me switch camera views, you can see here on the forward view that we're uh, getting up to Europa, our gravitational influence is only 0.17, but we're only, you know, 2,400 seconds away. Now, typically, when you're this close to a body, you would have a much higher gravitational pull. But uh, Jupiter, again, it's just such a massive beast that uh, its gravity is dominating our, our vessel, even though we're this close to Europa. Now, in the last video, we, uh, what did we do? I don't remember. We did something. But we eventually got over here to Europa. Oh, yeah. I remember the, kind of the main thing that we did in the last video was the base alignment. When we were still all the way out at uh, Ganymede, I, it, it, I recalled, I'm like, oh yeah, we want to start thinking about the base alignment before we get up close to the body. Because in the, fir in the first top, when we went from Callisto to Ganymede, I forgot about the base alignment until we were like almost on top of Ganymede. And the farther out you are when you start doing those types of uh, maneuvers, the better off you're going to be. In fact, I, you really, and, and I'll try to remember to do this in the next top, you really want to set up the base, uh, you want to start thinking about the base alignment when you leave the body so that it's part of your ejection burn. In this case, I didn't think about it till after the injection, after the ejection burn was done, so it might have cost us a little bit more than it had to otherwise, but it was still reasonable. And we did a few minor translation bumps here and there to uh, get the PEA and the uh, angle to the base. You can see here we have Europa base selected and the angle is now 0.00. .00. So in theory we'll pass straight over top of it. But as we get in closer to Europa there's a chance this will slip a little bit. And our PEA is about where we want it. We say about 30 kilometers. I said about 30 kilometers. And it's pretty close to that number. Okay, so let's, uh, what's the next step? Well, we don't have notes at this point because when I did the first hop over to um, Ganymede. I have to stop and think about what the names of these moons are. When we did the first hop over to Ganymede, uh, once we got to the point where I realized the base alignment stuff wasn't, uh, wasn't set up right, I stopped taking notes. So let me think about it now if there's anything that I want to add sort of to the point where, you know, now we're here. So yeah, I think, I think, I think we can add some stuff to the notes now. When you get up near the uh, body that you're going to, uh, you need to set up the orbit circularization burn. There's a couple of ways we can do that. In the last video, I did it. We're using the just the IMFD's orbit circularization program, but I think I might be able to do it better than that. Let's see if we can do this. Bring up IMFD on one side, and we're going to test it, and then we'll make notes. Uh, go to... Um, yeah, go back to the menu here, which we get to by bringing paging over to these options. Then we'll go to the delta velocity, and we have to hit plus to go back to this list. And let's see if we can do an orbit insert. I, tr I thought about this last time and then decided not to do it. But I think we can. So let's uh, see. Now we need to reference Europa. because otherwise we would be saying that we're going to circularize around Jupiter, and that's no good. And that's uh, 2,100 seconds from now. That's about right. So, yeah, I think we can just do it this way. Um, so let's make some notes on that. All right. Now, the uh, notes about base alignment, we're going to uh, pretty, much, pretty much ignore these notes for now. Using... Yeah, let's just let's just leave it at that. And you have to watch the previous video to know why I'm saying that. the The notes about base alignment are just kind of invalid before if with this method with this method, the base approach program seems kind of useless in in this case. So now let's say uh, part five. What do we want to call it? I guess part five. <laughs> Although our parts are kind of messed up now. Part five, or just you know, step five, perhaps. And uh, let's 
do that just to give ourselves just to ch fix the formatting here basically there we go and left justified okay it is all right now bring up imfds I forgot the name of the program orbit insert program uh this is uh let's see this is so course orbit insert just as a reminder of how to get to it or maybe even i should say mnu course insert that's just how you get there can i actually use yeah these work here i like these better if you press alt 26 that's alt and then 26 on the numeric keypad you get these arrows that look like that looks better i couldn't do that in the wordpad for some reason so bring up orbit mfds or bring up imfd's orbit insert program we did that um, actually we also want to say and reference and then press ref to reference the body that you're going to land on Okay, that we did that. And I guess we should say that we also want to make sure that our source is our vessel. Then press REF to reference the body that you're going to land on and, and make sure that the source is set to your vessel. If necessary, press page, then source, press PG, then source and set the source to x okay so we've done that now this whole thing here with the eccentricity slash apoapsis major axis i don't really know what that I don't really know what the differences here are. I guess, I guess it's saying, you know, if you want to insert your orbit based on a certain apoapsis, maybe. So maybe if we set that to 30k, I guess that's probably what it means. Whereas if we want to set our, uh, if we want to set our orbit insert based on the major axis, then we could set it there. Or the orbital period. Oh, I see. Yeah, so, yeah, if we want to change our orbital period in, say, 10,000 seconds for some reason, then we could set our orbit insert based on an orbital period of whatever we want. But really, I guess what we want here is, in most cases, we want to set it based on apoapsis. That'd be my guess. And then we'll set that, again, we'll set it to 30k. And apparently, if you change from apoapsis to something else that resets whatever you have so that's fine so let's uh, put that in the notes um, orbit insert will determine your orbit based on based on a selection of eccentricity Apoapsis, what are the other choices? Eccentricity, apoapsis, major axis, orbital period. Is that it? Yep. Or orbit period. Uh, probably in most cases, you will want to select app. Oh, apsis, and then set the apple apsis to the target altitude that you want, e.g. 30k. Okay, so we're going to do that, and then again come over here, set 30k, because once that's done, I believe all we have to do is page over and auto burn, but we probably want to get closer to the TEJ first. So we probably really don't need to do this until we're like 
you know, 500 seconds, but it's going to depend on, you know, the body that you're going to, you know, it takes longer to establish an orbit around a massive body than it does others. So, but, you know, I don't know what the up, what the high limit is, but I would say, you know, 1500 or a thousand seconds is probably as early as you really need to set that up. You know, when you're PET, I mean, so let's kind of mention that in the notes. Okay, when you are between, let's see, when you are as far as 1,500 seconds from periapsis, to as little as 300 seconds from periapsis, you'll want to start setting up your orbit insert burn all right that's good enough and in this case we certainly don't need to be as far out as 13 as 1500 so let's work time forward so that we're at 1300 or for other five 300 makes more sense to me angle to the base is good pa is holding okay we're about there Okay, so then when you're within when you're close to the periapsis, uh, let's say when you're within, you know, 200 seconds, give or take, of periapsis, press the PG button on the what is it called? Orbit insert program so that you can get to the BV AB buttons. Press AB when you're ready to commit. Did I spell commit? Yeah, commit to the burn. Op um, note, uh, remember, remember you can press the BV button to bring up the burn vector and orient the vessel manually ahead of time to save the autopilot the work of uh, to save the autopilot the work of orienting the vessel for you in some cases this can save quite a bit of RCS eh, I don't know about quite a bit but it saves some if you're a DV freak you want to do that Okay, burn vector, and you can see we're way out, so rotate to the left like that. Just going to kind of keep going like that until that uh, line comes down. Maybe warp time forward a little bit to speed that up. And we're almost where we need to be. Okay, right there, and orient that way now we're dead center now we can turn on auto burn and the autopilot doesn't have any work to do warping time forward and hopefully the uh, orbit insert program works well and then we won't have to do that other method with the orbit circularization program if this works then I think it's a lot better bring up orbit on this side yeah this looks like it's gonna work great Yeah, not bad. All right, let's bring up map MFD. See how we did with our base alignment and everything. And we just did pass the base, so if uh, by some sheer luck we could have arrived a little bit sooner, we could have, you know, maybe done a direct burn into into landing. But again, I, that's not something I'm real familiar with. I'll have to um, maybe that's something me and Dimitri can do a video on, like direct direct landings, like Earth to the Moon, and just target Brighton Beach from Earth and then arrive whatever it would be, you know, 500, 300 kilometers 
beforehand and then just burn directly to a stop and just touch down on the base without ever getting into orbit. People have asked me to do that a few times, and I've just never... It's just something I've never looked into. In a lot of cases, I just don't think it. I just don't think it helps. I think it adds a lot of comp, a lot of complexity for no benefit. But uh, I think you know people want to see it nonetheless. So uh, so one of these days I'll get around to it. All right. Well, we still got time, I believe, to land. So let's do that. Uh, I'm gonna bring up base sync over here just to see how we are doing. I'm gonna target Europa base. Let's change the ED. Or, yeah, press ED to change from equator to direct. And the reason you want that is because you, you always want to do your uh, you always want to do your base alignment burn when you're 90 degrees from from the uh, from the base. And you can see when we press ED, it shifts this line a little bit. It's pretty close here, even on equator, and this would work. But if you press the ED button, it puts it exactly at 90 degrees, and that's what you want to do when you when you do your base alignment burn. If you have to do any at all, you always want to be at 90 degrees from the base. And you can also see that when we have it on equator, we just don't have any valid information here. It tells us that our plane change is zero, but when we press the ED button, it gives us a number here for our plane change. All right, so once again, um, at this part, or at this point, we're basically done. Obviously, there's nothing left to do with IMFD, so if you want to tune out and skip ahead to the next video, you can. Otherwise, you can go ahead and watch my landing. So let's uh, warp time forward, and we're going to pass over this node here, and we're going to go around to this one, because anytime uh, when we do our deorbit burn, when we're halfway around, we are uh, going to, uh, it's going to have some impact on our distance off base. So if we align the base here, then do the deorbit burn, it's just going to throw it off anyway, so there's no point in doing the alignment at that point. And you'll note here that it uh, says target surface, but we've already set the target to Europa base, and I can see here the, la the longitude and the latitude that is correct. So even though that says target surface, we are still, in fact, targeting the proper place on Europa. It's one of those annoying little glitches in base sync that I've complained about for years. And as we're getting close to the halfway point, we're going to go to the retrograde position, and we're going to do it inefficiently, which is kind of strange considering I choose to do some things efficiently and others not so I have no idea how I make that decision in my mind okay we're coming around halfway you can see we're almost straight across but we got a little bit more to go and once we're straight across we have to go like another half degree forward I don't know why that is but we won't get we won't be halfway until we're just a little bit past that straight point and this kind of almost looks like a full degree maybe even more I guess it's probably because the uh, the orbital like the orbital uh, plane. There, we're halfway around. That that has to be what it is. Like, I guess if you were on the equator and your base was on the equator, then you would be exactly halfway around when that was exactly straight across. But due to the orbital plane, sometimes you have to be a little bit past it. That That's what it is. That makes sense. All right, orbit on this side. And put in some main engine to bring the PEA down. We're going to bring it all the way down to 1.5. Good enough. Now, it didn't really have too much impact on our distance here. And we're looking at this first orbit. We're not the second one. So if we want, we can set the number of orbits to one. But now when we get around to this point, we're going to do a little bit of a uh, correction to bring the distance all the way to zero. And it's going to be positive. In other words, we're going to be normal, normal plus. Uh, but instead of, since it's such a small number, we certainly don't need to orient to the normal plus position. We can either use translation thrusters, but... Uh, since we happen to be sitting this way, we'll just use hover engines the same way we did last time. Hover engines are very powerful, so we don't need much time. The TN is what I'm watching. Technically, we only need, for if we're using the full power of the main engines, we only need like a tenth of a second. But since we're using hover, we'll start them in about one second. Get a little closer. And, and now we'll start the hover bring that distance down and again I'm not going full blast on the hover just that's actually overshot a little bit but that's okay because even though I overshot a little bit you can see it's trending down and I don't want to try to guess how much to overshoot so I'm just going to leave it just like that now uh, again this scenario has the com nav stuff all set up to the same frequencies that are used on Brighton Beach 
and that's on purpose because all these bases that I put on these different moons are a copy of Brighton Beach. So Nav 1's already tuned into the radio beacon, Nav 2 is on landing pad 1, Nav 3 is on landing pad 2, and so on. I should probably change this around so that Nav 1 is landing pad 1, Nav 2 is landing pad 2, Nav 3 is landing pad 3, and then Nav 4 is the radio beacon. That would make more sense, but that's just the way I got it set up. Uh, let's rotate over so that we are heads up to the uh, planet. Put down the landing gear. Heads up to the to the uh, body, rather. It's not a planet, but to the moon. You know, it looks like there's a little bit of an atmosphere here. I wonder how, I wonder how significant it is. You see that little bit of haze in the background? So I'm actually going to bring up surface MFD. Do we have any dynamic pressure? No, none at all. Maybe when we get down to a kilometer or something, we'll have some dynamic pressure. But for now, what do we what do we have over here? What did I have on this side? I guess it was orbit, maybe? Well, I don't need orbit MFD anymore. Let me bring up a uh, burn time calculator. And that's our orbital velocity right now, but by the time we get down to... By the time we get down a little bit lower, it's going to increase a little bit. So let's put in a delta V of 1430. And that says that we need uh, 58 kilometers to stop. So let's warp time forward. Oh, I know what I had on this side. Actually, I don't need um, I don't need base sync anymore, so let me bring up VOR, VTOL. That's what I had. And when we get within 500 kilometers of the base, although I need to have nav 1. Translation, rotation. When we get within 500 kilometers of the base, we should have this MFD come online. It looks like there's a little bit of an atmosphere here. That's interesting. I'll have to look that up on uh, Wikipedia or something. Continue warping time forward. Let me put it on up surface also. Yeah, we're down to 8 kilometers. Just out of curiosity, let's bring up surface again. Yeah, we still have no dynamic pressure, no static pressure, so... At least in orbiter, there's no, there's no atmosphere, even if the texture kind of indicates that there is. And VOR, uh, how far away are we from the base? 1,000. So let's warp time forward until that's 500. Then we can, then we'll have a better idea of when uh, when we can expect VOR, VTOL to come online. Okay, there's 500. So let's bring up that MFD. Now we've got our data. And keep going forward. Because again, we only need, actually our, Velocity's increased a lot more than I thought it would, so let's change that number instead of 1430. So now we need 14. Let's go all the way to 1470. That's a pretty significant difference, 61 kilometers. Okay, we're almost getting to the point where we need to begin the burn, so let's uh, rotate back. And let's bring up the orbit HUD just to make sure that we are on that center position. You can see we're yawed a little bit left of center. So I want to yaw so that I'm dead center. And keep warping time forward. Check our velocity again, 1464. We're saying 1470. So we won't have to worry about starting the burn too late or anything. But we don't really want to overshoot that number by too much because then we'll start the burn way too early. So let's dial it down just a little bit. Let's go 1466. And 61.2, get ready to do the burn. And burning. And again, when we get within uh, 25 kilometers of the radio beacon, we're going to want to switch to one of the other landing pads. Uh, or rather, we're going to want to switch to a landing pad. And since I've got three landing pads set up, I'll just pick whichever one has the best alignment rather than targeting landing pad one or two or whatever. Altitude 5 kilometers. Uh, yeah, these aren't going to be up quite yet, but they'll be up any second. So that's landing pad 1. It's pretty well on target. That's 2. That's 3. That one's the farthest off, so let's go back to... Uh, let's go to 1. It's the closest. We've got quite a bit of altitude again, so 
you know, that's just the influence of Jupiter. Can't really hit, we don't have a terribly reliable PEA. I guess what I should do is I should use the map, I should use IMFD's map program when I do the the orbit burn to decide where the PEA is going to be because it's very accurate. See how we're doing. Wheels down. Gear down, rather. Oh my gosh, are we going to pass it again? Guess we're going to be okay. Okay, so that's not what I meant to do. Okay, let's put in some hover. This time, now, let's, let's not just press the altitude hold because it'll just put in a ridiculous amount of hover all at once bringing the vertical speed basically to zero. Okay, now getting rid of all that hover, wrong button. Press the wrong button, didn't mean to do that. So now when the vertical speed gets to zero, I'll engage the altitude hold and then get myself oriented here with the landing pad. Rotation. Translation. Translate a little bit this way and getting ready to engage uh, altitude hold. And holding. And that just gives me time to deal with the uh, orientation on the landing pad. Okay, we got that set. Now, where is Jupiter? It's behind us. So let's actually Rotation. let's orient the other way so that we can have Jupiter in the forward view as we land. Not that it, uh, not that it does a lot of good to do that, but it's just cooler. We've used quite a bit of our fuel. Since I was messing around with getting the forward view of Jupiter, we kind of messed up our, uh, kind of overshot there a little bit. That's okay. Just back up. Translation. A little bit of translation to take care of our alignment. Start taking out the uh, hover. Turn off attitude or turn off altitude hold, and just watch that vertical speed. And not let it get too far out of control. But we do need to drop a couple kilometers. Now I've got Jupiter in front of us, and again, I made I put all these bases at a point on Jupiter where you would always have Jupiter kind of right there on the horizon. Okay, we're, we're pretty well lined up here. Still got a bit to fall. 45 meters from the middle of the landing pad. Power that side off. Start taking away some of our velocity here so we don't overshoot the middle of the landing pad again. And we'll get down here and then we'll end this part of the video and that'll be the end of our second hop. So let me try to speed things up a little bit by taking out some of the velocity so we can fall faster. Now I'm going to really try to get that horizontal speed really close to zero. Watch my vertical speed. Okay. Just taking away a little bit of hover, drop a little faster. Tapping the trans, uh, translation around a little bit to try to keep the distance to the center of the landing pad at a reasonable number. Put in a little more hover, S slow things down a little bit so we don't drop so fast. Take out some hover, we're eliminating too much vertical speed. Take a look outside, we can see how we're doing, just dropping straight down to the pad. Oops, taking out a little too much vertical speed. Let me test translation at this point. So I'll need a little bit more hover to keep the uh, vertical speed.
tapping translation just to get the distance to the center of the pad a little bit, a little closer to the middle. It drifts a little bit more than you think it would. Uh, we've got such a low vertical speed, a horizontal speed, that's beautiful. Eliminate some of that vertical. But not too much. Almost down. And I'm getting, so one thing I'll check before we end this part of the video is I want to check our fuel. And I also want to bring up surface MFD and see if there's any atmosphere once we get all the way to the ground. 50. 40. 30. Okay, now we can control it with uh, 20. Actually, we need another tap of hover. Now we can control it just with translation. Yeah. Turn off the level horizon. And altitude is almost to the ground. And we're down. Turn off, uh, make sure you press and hold the period key to get rid of all the remaining hover, because sometimes you land and you kind of forget that you still have some of the hover engaged. So you just sit there on the pad wasting fuel. All right, so let's bring up surface uh, real quick. And okay, yeah, there's no dynamic pressure, no static. So we have no atmosphere of any kind. It just looks to me like there's a little bit of a glow on the horizon, but I guess not. And let's bring up burn time calculator and uh, we need RCS so we have a total of 17 kilometers left and I'm pretty sure we could get at least over yeah we can probably finish because we only have one jump left is to go over to IO so I'm sure we can do that with the remaining fuel I wasn't sure when we started on Callisto if we would have enough to go from to go down all three without refueling but uh, it looks like we definitely will all right so let me uh, control s here to save so I'm definitely not going to do any more recording tonight and if you like this part of the journey, if you like this hop from Ganymede down to Europa, hit the like button. If for some reason you didn't like it, hit the don't like button. But you know what I would rather you do much more than liking and disliking the video? Leave a comment. I'm going to like hypnotize you guys into leaving comments on my videos. So if you have questions about anything you saw here... Or if you saw something that I did that was like a total faux pas, leave a comment, or leave a remark, and say, dude, you're an idiot. You should have done this instead. I love it when people do that. There's no sarcasm there at all. <laughs> Check for links in the description down below. I'll have a link to the uh, document that I'm creating so that if you want to try to do a flight like this, you can go down that document and sort of check things off one by one. It's not completely comprehensive, so, I mean, it's not all-inclusive. So I do recommend that you read that document and watch these videos, because in these videos I'm going to have more details, and then plus you get to see what I'm doing. But the, the, but the document will help tremendously as, a, uh, as, a, as, a, as an addendum to these videos, you know. So if you want to print that out or keep it on your computer and go through it while you're trying to do this flight. And I'd be really curious to know if you do this flight, um, how useful is the document to you? Do you find anything in there that uh, is confusing or that should be the steps should be reworded or something like that? Let me know. I'd love to find out. So I guess that's it. And you know what comes next? The salute. I will see you in the next video.